So let's go to the, the seventh area of God's transcendent, what I'm calling his natural characteristics, kind of what he is by, by nature. And the seventh one is that he is all-knowing. He's all-knowing. Again, what theologians call his omniscience. What Timothy says is he's the only wise God. 1 Timothy 1, verse 17, the only wise God. Again, in this category, I want to define this as God knows everything it's possible to know. Just in the same way he can be everywhere it's possible to be, in the same way he can do anything it's possible to do. But if you ever thought about it, I actually think there are things God cannot do. He can't not be alive and be himself. He also, the Bible says he can't lie. Uh, to, to use a little mind game, he, he can't create a rock so big he can't lift it. See, there's some natural things that, so that doesn't limit God. He, he can do anything it's possible to do. He also can be anywhere it's possible to be. And I also believe in this area, he knows everything it's possible to know. Psalm 147, verse 5 says, His understanding, his knowledge, is beyond measure. So there's a, an aspect of the size of it. In, in Job 37, verse 16, Job describes God as a God who is perfect in knowledge. And of course, that, that phrase is only used about him. And then in talking about knowing our hearts, knowing our inner beings, knowing what's happening inside of us, 1 John 3, verse 20 says this, If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. And of course, this is in the context of knowing everything about us, looking into our, our hearts, our inner beings. One thing that's a little fascinating to me as I've looked at Scripture related to this topic is is asking the question, what things are knowable? I think at a point in time, I kind of assumed that, well, just everything is knowable, past, present, and future. But I've kind of come to a different opinion as I've looked at what the Scripture teaches along this line, which makes this area, again, kind of fascinating to me. You know, God does know everything, but maybe certain things are not knowable until they're either intended or they're chosen. There's such a thing as freedom. So what things are unknowable? Some future free choices that God makes and human being makes. Certain choices that have not been intended or they're a part of variables in life. What things are knowable that God knows in complete detail? Well, certainly all past events. He sees every detail. He also knows all present events. He knows everything taking place and every thought. He also knows all future planned events because he's going to make them happen, okay? And so they're intended, they're chosen, and so he can state them. I also believe many future predictable events are knowable simply because of, again, of, of trend and things happen in, in a certain way. But the Bible, again, seems to indicate that God himself is free, human beings are free, and when there's freedom, things can change. And here's the evidence for that. I want to give just a number of scriptures that lend to this idea that <clears throat> God's knowledge is limited in the sense of his own freedom and various aspects of human freedom. And here's kind of the evidence for that. Number one, scriptures relating to the fact that God having regrets over certain things. In fact, think of Genesis chapter 6, verse 6 where the Bible says he looked down on the earth and he said, I'm actually sorry that I've made man. Well, if he's sitting in eternity, you know, and, and always knew what was going to take place, why is he now sorry? That doesn't make an awful lot of sense, him having regret. Things not going the way they, they could have gone. Or, for example, in 1 Samuel 15, verse 10, the scripture says, I regret making Saul king. Now, why would God have any kind of regrets if he just knew all that was going to happen before it happened, so that, that makes those feelings or those thoughts or those words you know, mean nothing. It seems like choices are involved here. Another aspect of what things are knowable is the aspect of God himself questioning the future in Scripture. Questioning the future. For example, in Numbers 14, verse 11, he actually just says out loud, you know, how long will they despise me? He's kind of, a, kind of wondrous about how sinful people are being and how long are they going to be this way? It's, a, it's an interesting phrase that maybe brings God down to a personal level, but it also kind of indicates 
a bit of surprise or a bit of, a bit of hurt over the fact that, is this going to keep going on and on and on? Uh, the same thing is in Hosea 8, verse 5, where again, you know, how long will they turn away from me? He's, he, it's like he's stunned over the evil of people in their free choices. Again, indicating that uh, these are things he never really expected. Maybe he, and that's the idea of his freedom and our freedom. Uh, a third aspect that kind of indicates to me that things aren't totally fixed is when the Bible talks about things going differently than God expected. Things going differently than he, even he expected. In Isaiah 5, there's a whole story about God's vineyard, about how he did everything to get everything wonderful and nice and go in a certain direction and be blessed, but then it didn't happen. And he was kind of surprised and shocked that he'd done everything he could, but they went an another way. Not that he couldn't have understood that. Even parents understand all things that can happen. But sometimes when they do, you say to yourself, I, I never really expected that, you know, kind of a thing. You find that in, in God's responses as well. You find the same thing also in Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, where God actually says out loud, I thought Israel would return to me. I thought. So it was, it was kind of unexpected, the depth of depravity and the depth of sin. Now, here's another interesting one about the fact that, that maybe knowledge is limited to certain free choices. Uh, it's number four, where this, there's a couple of different references. One is in uh, Jeremiah 19.5, which talk about things that didn't even enter God's mind. That the people have done evil in such a way, God says, it didn't even enter my mind <laughs> that, that they would do these horrible things. Another aspect of this would be the aspect of God, number five, God testing people, God testing people. Think of the story of uh, Abraham, for example, in Genesis 22, where he takes his son and was, is about to sacrifice him. God intervenes, provides the sacrifice, but what God actually says there is, now I know, now I know that you will obey me. It's almost like God is saying, we, I don't really know until we see what you choose, you know, because choice is free. But, but now I really know, he says. And so Abraham becomes the, the father of faith. Another aspect of these, these limitations on what can be known is some futures that may not be. They may be or they may not be. For, for example, in Exodus chapter 4, God gets so upset with the nation of Israel, he says to Moses, I'm just going to wipe out these people. We're going to start all over again with you. It's kind of like he's going in a certain direction, but then everything goes haywire, and God says, let's just wipe them out again, and let's start a whole new future, which, of course, would have taken hundreds of years, right, for him to have a few kids and multiply and so forth, but God was kind of willing to do that, where futures change. Or here's an interesting one in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. It says that we can actually hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. We can hasten it. We, it can come more quickly because of our fulfilling the Great Commission, doing what God wants us to do. Well, again, if things are kind of fixed and they're all known and they don't change, how can we speed something up unless there's you know, variables involved? But the number one reason, here's the biggest one, that I believe the Scripture indicates that God is free and we are free and not all free choices are, can, be, can be known until they're either intended or made is because in the Bible... There's over 33 times the Bible says God changed his mind. 33 different instances where the Bible talks about God changing his mind. One is in the book of Jonah, where Jonah actually didn't want to go to Nineveh because he was kind of aware of this thing. His message to Nineveh was, 40 days you'll be destroyed. There was no if my people clause here. It was simply 40 days destruction. And then the Bible says they repented, and the Bible also says God changed his mind. So Jonah was kind of in a no-win situation, you know. It's either judgment or he's going to be viewed as a false prophet when it didn't happen. So he gets mad at the end because, again, being in this no-win situation. Now, if God knew absolutely he was not going to destroy Nineveh, then the message he gave to Jonah was a lie. Forty days destruction. That's what the message was. But then he changed his mind. And again, the Bible has a number of different situations where this phrase is mentioned, either God repented or he changed his mind about something. And that indicates to me there is such a thing as true freedom in the universe. Again, God knows all that can be predicted, all he's going to cause, all the past, all the present. There's an amazing degree of what he knows. But not everything is fixed. It's not fixed. There are feelings in God that are real. There are changes that can be, that can be made. 
And of course, this gives meaning to a lot of things. You know, first of all, this whole aspect of God knowing everything means we can say with confidence, does anybody understand me? Does anybody know me? If we've had those thoughts, yes, there is one who knows you and sees everything you're going through because he sees it all. There's no question about that. Is there any purpose in life? <clears throat> yes. God says, I know the plans I have for you. And he will lead us into those purposes. And of course, where do, where do I turn for wisdom and insight? Well, you turn to the all-wise God who knows everything that's possible to know. So the summary of these, these categories are we're talking about God's natural characteristics, things he just is by nature. These things are transcendent. They're big. They're awesome. They're powerful. The summary of this is that God is God. You can never have a big enough picture of him, never. He's truly, and we should reserve, reserve the word for him, he's truly awesome, full of awe in his abilities. He's the God most high, and he should be respected and feared because there's no one like him. 